dear friends all my teacher colleagues and dear students today i am beginning the unit allotted for a study of biomolecules that is the biochemistry part of our syllabus it includes six or seven topics and today the first topic amino acid is being discussed you know that there are many organic acids mostly the simple organic acid monobasic amino acids they have a long alkyl chain and the carbon atoms of the alkyl chains are traditionally named as alpha beta gamma delta epsilon etc now when an amino group is added to any of the carbon of this alkyl chain an amino acid is formed so these are the amino derivatives of simple mono basic or sometimes di basic organic acids the amino group may be associated at alpha beta gamma or delta positions that is carbon number 2 carbon number 3 carbon number 4 etc but in natural proteins only 19 types of alpha amino acids and an amino acid proline are included roughly it is said that there are 20 types of amino acids found in the natural protein molecules so there are large number of amino acids may be a hundred amino acids but the natural proteins contain 20 types of amino acid in which one amino acid proline is not amino rather amino acid the alpha carbon in amino acids is asymmetrical that means the four bonds of carbon alpha carbon are occupied by four different molecules or groups except the first molecule glycine that is ch2 ch and h2 cooh it is alpha amino acetic acid so alpha carbon contains two hydrogen and therefore it is not asymmetrical due to asymmetry it shows optical isomerism however the natural amino acids are all levorotatory when there is asymmetrical carbon the compound becomes optically active it may be dextro rotatory or levo rotatory but out of the two forms only the levo rotatory or l forms have been selected by our genetic system to be incorporated in the polypeptide chain in addition to the alkyl group it bears two groups of opposite nature the carboxyl group is acidic and amino group is basic 
that means on the same carbon two different bonds are occupied by carboxyl group and amino group and these two groups are of opposite nature one is acidic another is basic because of this at acidic ph amino acids behave as base that means they can accept proton and at basic ph they behave as acid that is they can donate proton this property is called amphalytic property because when proton is accepted the molecule becomes positively charged and when proton is donated the molecule becomes negatively charged the net charge on the molecule is affected by ph of its surrounding environment and can become more positively or negatively charged due to the gain or loss of proton at different ph known as dissociation points or pk they form dipole that is jeter ion or jeterian at isoelectric ph the isoelectric ph is the ph at which a molecule or surface carries no net electrical charge or is electrically neutral in the statistical mean now see it from the diagram at low ph that is acidic ph proton is rich in the medium and therefore amino group receives a proton atom and becomes positively charged at higher ph when the medium is rich in hydroxyl the carboxyl group donates proton and it becomes negatively charged but in between this two constants pk1 and pk2 that is on the mean value of these ionization constants pk1 and pk2 the molecule becomes dual charged gets positive as well as negative group so in the middle you can see the positive charge on amino and negative charge on the carboxyl position such molecules are known as dipole or the dual ion called jeterian jeterian has dipoles positive and negative both at the same time now normally people think that it should have 7 ph but the neutral ph7 is true for water molecules for others the isoelectric ph is important at which the molecule becomes dipole now how isoelectric ph is calculated at lower ph for example 2.34 this oh group this oh group is affected due to high proton in the medium amino group becomes positively charged at the high ph when hydroxyl ions are there this oh group releases hydrogen rather proton and becomes neg negatively charged so when isoelectric ph is considered the first ionization constant 2.34 and the second ionization constant 9.69 are added together and the mean value comes to be 6.02 we will see that such isoelectric ph is regarded as 
न्यूट्रल पी एच पर द सो कॉल सेवन अमीनो एसिड्स बिलोंग टू न्यूट्रल अमीनो एसिड्स नाउ द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ अमीनो एसिड्स इज मेड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ अल्काइल चेन द अल्काइल ग्रुप ऑफ अमीनो एसिड्स मे बी पोलर दैट इज आयोनाइजेबल विथ न्यूट्रल एसिडिक और बेसिक कैरेक्टर हाइड्रोफोबिक दैट इज नॉट सॉल्यूबल इन वाटर एंड समटाइम्स मे बी नाइट्रोजन हेट्रोसाइक्लिक रिंग द अमीनो एसिड्स मे ऑल्सो कंटेन सल्फर एटम्स On the basis of these structural variations, amino acids have been classified as follows. The first group is neutral amino acid. These amino acids have one amino and one carboxyl group. That is, these are mono amino, mono carboxylic acids. so they behave like a neutral amino acid but they form dipole that is deuterium at ph6 as stated earlier while we were calculating the isolytic ph glycine alanine valine leucine isoleucine serine and threonine these are the seven amino acids with neutral nature that is they become dipole at ph6 the last two amino acids serine and threonine are hydroxyl amino acid that is one carbon has been oxidized have the hydroxyl molecule on them now in this list you see that three letters of the name of amino acids for example gly for glycine ala for alanine bal for valine etc has been used in parenthesis these three letters are used because the genetic code also is made of three letters but when the sequence of amino acids is written in a computer these three letters make the chain very long to be written and therefore a single letter code also has been used that may belong to the name of amino acid or may not belong to the amino acid in these seven examples one letter codes belong to the names of amino acid that is g for glycine a for alanine b for valine l for leucine i for isoleucine s for serine and t for threonine these are positively charged at ph below 6 below 6 i mean below isoelectric ph and negatively charged at ph above 6 so at the isoelectric ph they are neutrally charged dipole but at lower ph these are positively charged higher ph these are negatively charged serine and threonine are hydroxy amino acids see the structure of these amino acids glycine the r group is absent in place of r there is a hydrogen so the carbon contains two atoms of hydrogen but alanine it contains methyl group valine it contains a propyl group a branch propyl group and in this way the length of alkyl group changes butyl group leucine 
its isomer is isoleucine but these two amino acids leucine and isoleucines are separately coded by our genetic system so regarded as two different amino acids these are the serine and threonine molecules you can see that serine also contains oh and threonine also contains an oh Now the second group is acidic amino acid. These amino acids have one amino but two carboxyl group. That is monoamino bicarboxylic acid. So they behave as acidic amino acids. Aspartic acid and glutamic acid are typical examples. Their isoelectric pH is extremely low, 3 pH. So these are positively charged at pH below 3, but negatively charged at pH above 3. However, they have one amino derivatives each. Aspartic acid forms asparagine, ASN or ASPNH2, and glutamic acid forms glutamine, that is GLN, or GLUNH2. Here you see that one letter codon, one letter code, N for asparagine, and Q for glutamine is taken. Q does not belong to the name of glutamine. These two amino derivatives behave as neutral amino acid. These are the aspartate and glutamate in ionic form. Glutamic acid is glutamate. Aspartic acid is aspartate. And their derivatives are asparagine, and glutamine. Here the carboxyl group, the second carboxyl group is replaced by amino group. So, you can say that at the physiological pH 7.5, the neutral as well as acidic amino acids and their amino derivatives are all negatively charged. So as many as 11 amino acids are negatively charged at the physiological pH of our cell, our blood plasma, 7.5 pH. Now the third group is the basic amino acids. Normally the basic amino acids have two amino group but only one carboxyl group. So these are diamino monocarboxylic acids. Their isoelectric pH is very high, 9 pH. Arginine is more basic because it has an additional amino group. Another amino acid is lysine. Arginine and lysine, these are the two typical basic amino acids. Lysine has two amino group, but arginine has a third amino, third nitrogen in amino form, so it is more basic than lysine. And these basic amino acids are present in rich numbers in the basic protein histone found with our DNA forming chromosomes. In view of the basicity, histidine that is a nitrogen heterocyclic compound also behave as basic amino acid 
as a lavish vase. So let us see them in the diagram. This is the lysine. It has a normal amino group and a second amino group. In arginine, the normal amino group, the second amino, third amino and one more amino group. Amino, amino, both types of structures are there. In the histidine, there are two nitrogen in the heterocyclic ring, one acts as proton acceptor and therefore it behaves as Lewis base. So as many as three amino acids are basic in nature. Now there are two amino acids containing sulfur. These are cysteine and methionine. But the position of sulfur in two amino acids differ. In case of cysteine, there is a side group SH that is sulfhydryl or sulfonyl group. The sulfhydryl or sulfonyl groups are very reactive, reducing groups, act as hydrogen donor, and in the protein they form a dimer known as cysteine. In the cysteine, those two sulfur molecules become covalently linked and their bond is more strong than the bond between two oxygen atoms. In methionine, a thioether is there. Sulfur is in between the chain so it has no free hydrogen to react with any other as reducing agent. However, methionine is the first amino acid to be incorporated in any protein at the time of translation. You see the structure of cysteine and methionine in cysteine. The last group of alkyl is SH group, but in methionine sulfur falls within the chain, its bonds are satisfied. Now this is the cysteine. Here two sulfur atoms in the middle of the chain have become linked together covalently. So, the dimer of cysteine is called cysteine. In a protein chain, two cysteine molecules frequently form cysteine dimer by formation of disulfide bridge. A typical example is insulin. Insulin has two chains, a chain and B chain. A chain has 21 amino acids and B has 30 amino acids. In between them, a 77 and 2090 disulfide inter A B chain bridge are formed. But within the A chain, an intra chain disulfide between 6th and 11th position also is formed. See this structure of insulin. You can see at the 6th position and 11th position there are two cysteine molecules and their sulfur atoms have formed disulfide bridge. In between the A and B chain, 7, 7, interchain disulfide and 2019 disulfide bridge have been formed. These are very important. If these bridges break, the insulin becomes inactive. Even if one disulfide breaks, the property of 
insulin reduces more than half. Now there are some amino acids in which aromatic groups are there, the homocyclic rings are there, tyrosine and phenylalanine are two such amino acids with homocyclic aromatic rings. These amino acids form the unit of protein, no doubt, but they have some more important properties. They act as raw materials for synthesis of hormones like thyroxine and adrenaline. Adrenaline belongs to a separate chemical group, catecholamine, that is derived from tyrosine or phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is also used or tyrosine is also used for synthesis of melanin pigments of skin. If the enzyme tyrosinase is mutated, depigmentation occurs, that is known as vitiligo, but commonly the people say it is leucoderma. Technically, there is no medical term like leucoderma. These are the structures of phenylalanine and tyrosine. The third compound is tryptophan that contains a nitrogenous ring also. So it belongs to the nitrogen heterocyclic compound that is histidine, tryptophan and proline. Tryptophan, the structure you have seen. Another is histidine, that earlier you have seen, it acted as Lewis base. And proline, I mentioned in the first page, that it is an amino acid. They have nitrogen heterocyclic rings. Proline is a different amino acid that has no typical group CH and H2. It has an amino group in the ring rather than amino group on alpha carbon. In nature, proline is oxidized to form hydroxyproline. Hydroxyproline is not considered as a separate amino acid because there is no genetic code to select hydroxyproline directly. Because of difference of the nature, that is absence of amino group, when it reacts with ninhydrin, proline and hydroxyproline give yellow color where the other amino acids give violet color. This ninhydrin test is very sensitive test for amino acids and commonly used in laboratories for identification of amino acids in the solution and also when separated by chromatography. You can see the structure histidine, hydroxyproline and proline. Now in the list of these 20 amino acids, some amino acids are essential amino acids without which protein synthesis will be affected. The essential amino acids are not synthesized in our body from any other amino acids. So these are indispensable but when the essential amino acids are present in body the remaining 10 or 11 non-essential or dispensable amino acids can be synthesized.
in human a total nine amino acids are considered as essential and if there are these are present in food in sufficient amounts demands of other amino acids can be fulfilled rose in 1955 however found that histidine is essential for infants only not for the adult for laboratory animals like rat arginine also is essential amino acid but it is not essential for human so see the list of nine amino acids which are essential amino acids these are histidine threonine lysine phenylalanine leucine valine isoleucine tryptophan and methionine now i just have said that amino acids are tested by ninhydrin reagent in case of paper chromatography and silica gel chromatography or thin layer chromatography it is used as a powerful reagent hardly 0.1 percent solution is very effective in reacting with even 1 microgram of the amino acid present in the sample if you touch a paper naked hand in your sweat there are amino acids and if ninhydrin is spread your thumb print will develop at the place where you have touched the paper this ninhydrin reagent is chemically known as 2,2 dihydroxy indane 1,3 diene or commonly called triketohydrin indin hydrin din triketohydrin din hydrate the name is complex so please remember properly triketohydrin din hydrate it gives blue violet color on heating up to 110 degree centigrade proline and hydroxy proline gives yellow color the serine and threonine which were the semi oxidized form hydroxy amino acids can give blue color only on 80 degree centigrade now there are some more reagents are used but ninhydrin or triketohydrin din is a proper and very reliable reagent for testing the amino acids in the next session we shall discuss how peptide bonds are formed and how the polypeptide chain or the protein is synthesized thanks a lot